Good afternoon all. It's post bag, single item post bag, uh, this one because it's quite complicated so uh, it'll take a while to show. Uh, this came from AliExpress uh, via Ireland it would seem. Never quite understood how these things get here from China but yeah. Okay, I'm in. Let's see what it is. And it's this, it's a battery capacity DC power detector, uh, 0 to 300 volts, 0 to 100 amps, that's 3000 watts, there's a little reset button there, or a display select button. Uh, on the back, some large screws, and, oh, what are those called? Oh no, this is not what I thought it was, I thought it was one of those... Um, pull in receptacle things but this is just simply a bolt screwing down onto a copper base um, yes yeah, so not one of those I can't remember the name of them now I'm trying to work out how to get the back off this thing and it seems that these uh, panel mount clips are part of the back plate so by levering them off I do seem to be uh, removing the back plate so that's good and this is what's inside. Now you may uh, be thinking, yes, that's a very familiar looking LCD. And there's the ribbon cable into the ribbon cable connector. <laughs> yes, that looks very much like the one on this device, which was in my shed in my last video and uh, no longer works. And I think it's the LCD, new LCD. I'm just gonna steal it off this device. But anyway, this video is really about this device. Uh, now you can see that uh, unlike this one here, the specs are very similar. They're 300 volts uh, maximum, 100 amps maximum. Oh, where's the shunt for this then? Where's the 100 amps shunt? Oh, it's not that, is it? That set of resistors there. Let's get in a bit closer. Yes, I think it is. Now these are R001. So is that... Um, a hundredth of an ohm, 10 milli ohms, four of them in parallel. But is that going to take a hundred amps? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if you look at the shunt on this one, it's these four massive pieces of copper. That looks a bit more like a hundred amps to me than these surface mount resistors. Nevertheless, that's the spec on this thing. Now, I think this is a bit short changed, uh, just having three connectors here. Yes, um, these two positives would be just common. Are they actually connected together? Yes, they probably are. You can see uh, some tinned copper across there, which links that area to this area of wires. So these are just connected together. So yes, you can use a common terminal for that and it saves money, I suppose, having three rather than four. Um, now I'm, I need to look at this because it says on here, um, what does it say? Yeah, N and L. You've got two L's and an N and another N up there. I mean, is that live and neutral? That's just daft, isn't it? Because this is DC. Um, but anyway, this shows that uh, that is V in, that's V out, hence the shunt across there for current measurement. And this is the positive V in. So let's put 12 volts on this thing and watch it fire up. Right, let's connect it up. That's positive to the L, negative to the N. Uh, nothing. Why is that not? <laughs> Why is that not doing anything? Uh, let's try the other one a minute. Right, positive down there, negative up there. Yeah, well that works. Um, and it beeps. So my 12 volts is all right, so what's wrong with this thing? Let's try it again. Well, this doesn't work. Um, now, did I reverse polarity it? I think I did reverse polarity it, but it shouldn't really matter because there are numerous diodes around here which should have protected against reverse polarity. I don't really mind that much. I do have another of these coming, so I can still uh, do this post bag on the other one. I just saw another one and I thought, well, that'll do. 
but now I'm inclined to see if I can use the display from this one to fix this one because this is going back in the shed and I want to use this board because well a it's got four connection points and I've got four wires um, so really I just want the display from this hooked up to this so now you can probably see I've already done this but uh, the trick is to get the display off there pushed into this connector and then see if this board works using that display so let's do that right I've got the ribbon cable of the display to reach into the connector on my old board now I'm going to use this 7 point whatever volts it is to power up the old board so I'll do that like that the polarity can't be wrong because I know this will work because I've done it one of my batteries is out so I'll put it back in that powers up and we have the display now there's no backlight because that's coming off this other uh, module with the backlight no that's actually under program control because now the buttons underneath but I can just press down on the board um, to fire this up the backlight's actually on on this board because this is powered up with 7.2 volts but now I can flick through the screens let's tip that up so that's the one where the backlight is on and if you hold it hold the button then it's scanning all the way down from on down through 59 seconds down to off backlight off now I think if you double click it's gone up to one second and I think now if you hold it it's now incrementing I hope you can see that and I'll just keep holding it until it gets up to backlight on release and now a single press will take me to the next screen and now there are I don't know what that is greater than 160 volts uh, less than zero volts that's probably what was making the alarm sound in fact I could probably test that um, press and hold no that's immediately gone to another screen that's probably because the the thing bounced so press and hold is it on that oh, that's counting up so now it's less than 0.7 volts uh, no it must have been higher than that this one says an alarm at greater than 29 amps so we're not worried about that because I can't really test amps at the moment ah now it is oh yes because it's the measured voltage across the two input terminals that it's measuring so it probably is less than 0.7 volts now we have that alarm if I press and hold that can I <laughs> that's an alert oh I'm probably not on the uh, screen for changing that so let's go back to that that's the backlight on that's the greater than 160 volt alert that's the less than now if I press and hold on that that's going up I think if you double click and hold no that's still going up treble click to go down and hold that's now going all the way down less than zero volts change screen to save it and that should eliminate the beeping um, because it's detecting that there's less than so many volts on the input so yeah that kind of fixes that the point is however what I really want which is the LCD works uh, on this one I'm not sure whether the module works ever did work or whether perhaps I killed it who knows it doesn't really matter like I say I'm just stealing the LCD from this one so I now need to get it off there get it on here and get this one working again so let's slide that and get the LCD out right so I need to take the old um, LCD module off here now the only thing that's holding it on is the two connections for the green backlight LED so I'm gonna to have to unsolder those let's take the power off one of my cells is out anyway but let's take the power connector out so let's get those two LED connections uh, desoldered incidentally the price of this oh I should do a, a screen grab really on the AliExpress item but I've got a feeling it was either $11 
or $13 something of that order. I think it was free shipping. So not terribly expensive and I mean I'm quite happy to pay that amount for a replacement LCD for this because this is really important to my system in the shed. So I don't mind that if, if I've either written the item off or if it never worked to start with, I really don't mind. I only wanted the LCD. <laughs> right, iron is hot. Let's see if I can wiggle it out by alternately heating up the two connections. I'm just pulling the LCD out of its holder, which isn't what I want to do. Yeah, it's coming out slowly. I just can't, I haven't got a very good grip on it because I'm gripping the LCD, but that's pulling away from the backlight module. Perhaps if I take the LCD completely off and just hold on to the backlight module, I can coax it out like that. I think it's coming out. I will have to suck these holes out once I've got this thing out. And it's out. Okay, let's clean these two holes and then I can get the new LCD with its backlight module so that I don't have to disturb the little two pieces of double-sided sticky down either side, which is all that's holding that in. Uh, and get that transferred to this. Rather than sucking these I might actually just try heating them up and banging them because that often works. Yeah that seems to be working. Heat it up and bang it down. Well the solder's certainly coming out of the hole. Right let's try a bit of sucking now. Heat it up and suck. Other side, heat it up and suck. I'm not sure that one worked as well. Heat it up and suck. Let's take a look at the holes. Let's take a look at those two holes. Oh yes, they look like they're quite nicely sucked out. Right, let's get the new LCD on. Now the new LCD, um, take, tear that piece of foam away, um, is actually stood off the board on two little felt pads, um, presumably so that it sits into the right position behind this uh, front window on this front part of the case. Now I've just tried lifting it up and it's lifting away the white plastic backlight sheet but that might not be a problem because I can probably take the one off the back of here. Let's have a go at that. Right yeah this is also held on with a little bit of double-sided sticky at that end. Very thin strip but a much larger amount there so I think I'll probably use this taken off the old one and put it on the new one. Let's see how that goes. First I've got to get these out but there's no point desoldering them, I might as well just cut them because they're long enough to go into my other board um, without bothering to desolder them. So let's cut these. That gets that off and really that's a very daft way to mount it because they've mounted the double sided sticky onto that plastic um, back sheet which isn't actually attached to this so it doesn't really mount it properly anyway. Right so that's that off there. Now I can put this sheet which did get a little bit distorted while I peeled it off but it should be alright onto the back of the working LCD. Just got to line that up best I can. That looks pretty good. And now mount this onto this board. Oh, what has happened there? There's only one leg on the backlight LED. 
What's happened there? What's happened is that the LED, when I cut the wire um, on the board, of course there was a huge stress on it, and it's actually shattered straight across the LED. You can probably see it there, and broken it effectively in half. So this uh, back holder actually isn't going to be any good. I'm going to have to peel the LCD off it and put my other LCD onto this onto the old back holder. That's all I can do now. Yes, that didn't go terribly well, did it? Right, so the new LCD is now on the old back illumination panel because that's got a working LED in it. Uh, put that the legs of that through the holes. Now there was nothing attaching this to the PCB previously, only really the soldering of the backlight LED and of course the ribbon cable will also hold it on to some extent and we'll just have to see how that goes. So I'll solder these connections back on and see if it all works. Uh, right, so that's soldered back in. I put a little piece of blue tack there just to hold it. That actually could end up being permanent, who knows. Right, let's plug some power in on here. Oh, that's fixed, isn't it? So that's good. Uh, got the Chinese screen, the English screen, the volts and amps at the top screen, the volts and amps on the left screen. Just turn this iron off, really, shouldn't I? Uh, the choice of whether the backlight stays on or doesn't is on a timer screen. Uh, over voltage alarm, under voltage alarm, over current alarm and back to the Chinese screen. And I noticed actually when I rebooted it, let's do it again, it says something in Chinese. I'd never seen that before, uh, but something briefly flashes up on the display. No idea what. And this, let's have a closer look at it, um, is just simply a plastic with some sort of texture, which I presume um, lets the light, you can see the texture there, gets the light from the LED and spreads it across this whole area. And then there's a, a white sheet on the back and a white sheet on the top. Uh, which way did that go? Oh yeah, I think that went there, that's right. Um, just to provide a nice even illumination. Uh, just with this LED simply glued in to a little cutout there, it's not that sophisticated, but yeah, that LED shattered when I uh, cut one of the legs with the snips and forced it very quickly upwards, I suppose, and it just broke the LED. Yes, this has been somewhat brutalized, possibly destroyed by overvoltage, um, and also the LED backlight plate destroyed. But I did just want the LCD from this, so I'm not terribly unhappy. Let's peel that off there. Oh, they didn't even peel off the backing sheet on that piece of um, self-adhesive foam. That's why that wasn't stuck down. Yes, they forgot to peel off the backing sheet. Crazy. So this video was going to be um, a post bag and a sort of overview of how this thing works. It does have an extra feature. It has a Bluetooth module in there. Now you can download an app on your phone, but it's one of these apps um, which isn't properly on the Google or Apple store. So you have to override the security mechanisms and say, yes, I'm happy installing a dodgy app, which uh, I got from some random unknown place. It's not terribly useful. You've got to have your phone within 10 meters of the unit. Quite frankly, if there's a display on here, I'd far rather use that. But anyway, the LCD has been taken off this, so this won't get used. I have got another one of these coming, um, so I can redo that post bag video and show how this thing works. Um, but I fixed my meter and that can now go back out in the shed. So I'm happy. Cheerio.